Hello, everybody. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's taken. So that's you can't that use is that. definitely taken. Um, can I get you to stand closer to the log? Yes, here? sir. I want to make sure and get you in here. This is my buddy Grant Foreman. Grant is a, a steel timber sports competitor, and of course, all kinds of other stuff too. And you're an engineer. Correct. At yes. Honda. The best. Okay, <laughs> I am very much a Honda guy. Back whenever I did my motocross racing, I was. Uh, I was on a 400EX to start with, but then I had, did some trades and I got the frame for a 1987, or it was an 86, I can't remember, Honda 250R four tracks. And back then, that was whenever those were still the number one go-to racing four-wheeler. And so getting that frame was a big deal. And what I ended up doing was I got a, um, I got a ATC liquid cooled, the liquid cooled ATC 250R three wheeler, and I raped all the parts off of that and with other stuff, and I made me a racing 250R. So I believe I'm pretty familiar with this engine. You are. All right. Yeah. So uh, that cylinder right there is. That is a 250 cylinder pre before 2001 before fuel injection. Okay, so this is actually a Honda cylinder. Yes, that was, was that's how it started. Yeah, yeah. Now there's a new head on it. Yeah. Uh, they've bored it, stroked it. It's 330 cc now. Very 27. Yeah. yeah, and there's a company that actually does these for four wheeler racing, riding mm -hmm. that kind of. I thing. I was expecting you to tell me that it was an ESR, an Eddie Sanders racing. It is. Cylinder. Yes. So he did that to he did a that stock one. Honda Bingo. cylinder. Yep. Yeah, so Eddie Sanders Racing has uh, been around for decades, but um, he kind of really hit his stroke with, uh, with specifically the Honda 250 four-wheelers, and he'll do the dirt bikes too and everything, but, um, and he actually has a casting, or is he even with us still, do you know? The company is, I'm not, I've I'm never not sure actually him. met him. I think he may have actually passed, but he actually, um started casting his own cylinders very much like what we have with our husqvarna 372 chinese cylinders and the uh the, what's the italian uh uh, uh starts with an m what's meteor. The, meteor 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 um so uh, he was doing and that. this may be started as a as a copy of that gotcha and, and is is reprinted to right. that they make the cylinders they make the the top end all the gasket kits and everything well i want to do a, a real breakdown with this because what is really odd the biggest secret about these saws is that there is, really is no secret right it's just if you can do it yes it's all been done before in the motorcycle or atv community and it's one thing to make the power it's the other thing to get the power to the wood right and that's via your chain your sprocket, your carburetor, those other pieces, as well as the frame. And that's one of the things that Dennis Cahoon is the builder of this saw. That's one of the things that he does nicely. His frame design is set up. It's very balanced and easy to operate. And that's one thing that he's kind of perfected. And now he's able to put different size motors, different power onto those. And then the chain, that kind of is uh, one of those, everybody has their, their own chain person but uh, depending on your chain, you can get another five, 10% yeah. in each cut. So. Now I'm noticing something different going on with that carburetor though. What, did, what is that carb? That carb is a Makuni carburetor. It's actually made for uh, the ski do racing. So the okay, so it's a watercraft snowmobile. racing. Or it's watercraft, watercraft. yes. Okay. Specifically made for that, but obviously it fits this purpose as well. And, um, it's able to keep up with the flow. There's a couple different types of carbs that are out there. There's a Kahin one also. There's a different, a blackjack version that's similar to this, but uh, they're all doing effectively this, the same thing. Now, now, I notice that you do not have a power valve. Correct. So if you look closer at the, um, at the carburetor itself, it's a little bit different than what you might find. My other bike saw has, it's a slide carburetor. It's got a little bit different uh, setup for the piping into it. Yeah, but I'm talking about the power valve for the exhaust. Oh, for the exhaust? Yeah. yeah. No, there's nothing there. It's, so, a, it's a straight pipe into so the... So then that has to be an aftermarket cylinder because in 
And in, in, in 98-ish, what you were saying, they, they were running power valves. Yes. Yes? So, geez, I just proved you wrong. I am no longer the novice lumberjack. I have just... <laughs> you are an expert. So it's based on that 250, yes. Yeah, but, okay, but, okay. But ESR is making the... Well, well the big thing that uh, I... Whenever I first saw this, I, I met you in Alabama last year at the race there. And my first question out of my lips about this was, what do you do about the water jackets? Because this is a liquid-cooled setup. Yes, it was. And some of the bike saws that you see, for example, my other saw, it actually uses that water jacket as the oil reservoir for the bar. So it no longer is water-cooled. It's actually just a reservoir for that. Does it, this still, does it circulate, or is it just kind of there? It just is gravity-fed into the bar. So that oil is there. It is oh. a bit of a heat sink oh, for it, I see. but it'll drop it uh, so directly the bar. So what you're doing with that one is your oil reservoir drains actually through in the, the cylinder. It's actually in the jacket around it. So okay. you'll, you'll put it in the front. It'll drain through that jacket, come out in the back, and feed directly to the bar. So uh, uh, hopefully you don't know this, but would you guess how long would it take before this actually burnt up because it can't cool itself? Uh, wide open out of the wood, I'm going to guess 20 to 30 seconds of wide open revving. You're going to overheat and have bad things happen. Dang. Dang. That's, 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 that's dangerous in a different kind of danger. That's a lot of money. Right. It's super mistake. high compression. It's building heat all the time. There's no way to get that out of there. And uh, despite using a little higher octane fuel that uh, retards the timing a little bit, it's still not meant for long durations. And so I, I, what I think I notice is what you got going on. Your pulley is hooked directly to the crankshaft. That's right. So whenever you're wrapping that rope around there, you're literally wrapping it around the, the crankshaft to an extent. Correct. Yep. yep. All right. And uh, the, the stator and everything still in yeah, place? The, the ignition is a little bit different than uh, a traditional. So some guys actually had 250s that still have their ignition and their pickup on there. Uh, this is one of the uh, newer ignition systems. So it's got a separate coil and a separate piece that goes over the, the stator. All right. And uh, who builds the pipe? The pipe is an LED pipe. So that's, uh, I'm not actually sure where they're based, but they do all of the pipes for Dennis and some of the other gotcha. bike saw builders. Gotcha. And the, 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 I see the removable head there. Yes. It has, it has shit mounted to it. Yes. Yeah. So there is definitely a decomp valve there. Depending <laughs> on the saw, they run one or two decomps, and that's to give you enough so that you can get past that, that pull to yeah. get enough yeah. speed to get the spark and get a fire. About how much compression do you ha have with this? I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. Yeah, you. Probably you can't even do a test because you can't pull it. You can't pull it. You can't yeah. pull it over yeah. without it yeah. being decomped. So um, uh, do you, I mean, we can look at this later, but for the video purposes, uh, do you have a spare piston? Yes, like a, okay. I do. I have what, one that... Uh, good, I'll be able to add that in there to the video. And you know, it'd be great. Do you have a spare 3120 piston to give these folks something or oh, just anything, really, because the deal is, guys, literally at my house just two days ago, I ran into a, uh, a, a Honda 250, 250R piston that I've been sitting, I was going to make an ashtray out of or something, and I was like, man, this thing's been sitting here for like eight years, and so I just, I tossed it, you know, it was a junk piston, but I did have a moment to look at it and go, oh, I got to ask Grant so that we can show this on camera. Because it's one thing to say 330 cc's. It's one thing to look at the difference in, say, I don't know, a 372 XP piston versus a 330 piston. They are massive. So um, we'll definitely show that off. Okay. Just rip it and grip it, right? Yep. We'll turn the oiler on. Yeah. And then we should be able to fire. All right. Camera. Hold firm. Hold firm. Hold hard. Rev it a little bit, give it get it warm. Yep, just wake it up. You know, about three, four seconds. You got it. Alright. <laughs> uh, it was everything I 
I thought it should be. There's nothing quite like it. Wow, I gotta go change my underwear. <laughs> Damn, that thing is a hoss. Oh, my first cut was crooked as shit. But yeah, I can see how you, what you mean by like the up cut would be. Yeah, straight, straight up angles. Angles. how it bites. But, it, 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 drive yeah. you backwards. Man, that thing is a hoss. But you know, I think the Shindau would take it. It's close. It's pretty, yeah. You know, Shindau is. It's just a scorcher. <laughs> oh man, thank you very much for letting me you run. You're welcome. That. that is cool as can be, man. That is. Here's where your other cookie ended up. So one thing that can happen, we put the bar pretty tight on here for this run for you, just to yeah. make sure everything was good. But when those cookies come off, if they catch the the side of the bar, they can throw the chain, and that's when things can go. Gotcha. Astray. Yeah, so that we, first <laughs> that first cookie, man. Oh. That's like an Oreo double stuff. Yeah, that's a cake. <laughs> that a cake. <laughs> and a little adjustment in the cut. That's fine. Yeah. It was throwing sparks, too. Yes, yeah. they all do, and that's just the speed of the chain. You're looking at chain speeds over 200 miles an hour. Yeah. So RPM in the cut will be between nine and 11,000, depending on the saw, depending on what you're doing. Yeah. Here, it was probably a little bit faster because you, you weren't quite yeah. loading it up. The, like the, the first cut, I swear, like I didn't even, uh, that, was, that's, that was a lot to take in. <laughs> Brother, it is. That's it is. a lot to take in. But that first cut, I wasn't even aware of anything other than, oh, hold on to it. Hold on to it. Yes. To it. And, and, but, and then I was like, oh God, I gotta start pushing. But the second cut, I, I second cut was good. Yeah, very good, very good. All right, that's cool. All right, well, I hope that you guys have been entertained. I know I have, and, and somebody's, gonna ask, out what, tonight, and somebody's gonna ask what kind of wood you're cutting, and that's tulip poplar. That'll be the same stuff we use at Sawfest. Oh, okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. If somebody wants to measure the, the time, they can get an idea. Um, we cut some of this a, a few weeks ago at about 0.85, one cut. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that right there is not a race chain. That is, is it straight stock? No, no, it's taking that. You yeah, it's a, it's a very nice practice chain. So All right, good. Right. I'll use that chain occasionally if the wood is questionable or if I see something in it. It's a good solid chain, but not one of the, the big dog ones. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. But still, it is still 404 though, right? It is 404, yes. Yep. Yeah. Woo. And it runs on a 16 or 17 pin sprocket, depending on. You know, it started easy. Yeah, it does. You it know, I mean, that, right away. These, that wasn't a big deal. Dennis does a heck of a job with the, with the saws, getting them tuned and dialed in. And, uh, yeah. So they are easy to operate. Yeah. That's, I, that's the key. I think I was even holding on to that for a little bit too <laughs> before I'm just, oh god, I gotta throw this away. Yeah, you get that habit, you know? you dump it. Yeah, very cool. All right, so we'll uh, close this out. That's like, a, I was, tonight I think I'll rub one out thinking of that. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs>